the record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience while we resolved an issue. Mr. Martinez, you may continue. Ma'am, in addition to sending the flowers, you actually sent the letter to the um, brother, sister, or the family of uh, Travis Alexander, correct? I sent it to his grandparents' address. But you sent it to the family, didn't you? Yes. And the, the letter was dated uh, July 28th of 2008, correct? Yes, that's when I wrote it. Pardon? Yes, that's when I wrote it. And that's Travis Alexander's birthday, isn't it? Yes. Ma'am, I'm going to play Exhibit 470, which talks about these particular issues, and then I'll ask you whether or not that is you on this particular um, excerpt, okay? Okay. You did uh, grant interviews to uh, it, people from 48 Hours, didn't you? Yes. There were two interviews, right? Yes. There was one in Wairika, correct? Yes. With Jonathan Leach was the person asking the questions, right? Right. And then there was another here at the jail, correct? Yes. And the person asking the questions was Maureen Marr, correct? Yes. The date of the interview out in Wairika was August 5th of, of 2008, correct? I don't remember the date. That sounds right. Okay. Four seventy. Travis's family deserves to know what happened, and because I may be the only person that will ever be able to say what happened that day. Um, at least for now, I believe that one day all things will be made known. And so they'll know who did this, and they'll know what exactly went down, and they'll know what happened. Um, but I just know that if it were my brother, I would want to know. Um, and I feel that above all things, they deserve to know what happened. And um, they deserve to hear how things went down. Um, if it, again, if it were my brother, I'd want to know what his last minutes were like and what was being said and things like that. Did you ever communicate to them or try to reach out and tell them? Yes, but not until I got into here. Um, I wrote them a letter. I don't know if it'll ever make it to them. I don't know if they'll even read it. Um, but that's the only attempt that I've made. Other than, um, I made, I called his grandmother and, and, um, you know, I, I express my sympathies to her, and and uh, I mailed, well, I sent flowers to her. I sent her 20 white irises, and um, the reason I chose irises was because when Travis and I were discussing um, baby names, he said, of, of the girls' names, you know, he liked the name Iris. You know, he liked the name Hinkley and Megan and Reagan, and I thought Hinkley was an interesting name for a girl's name. It's actually a last name, um, but Iris was among those, and I thought, well, that's a flower, and, and I'll just do that. Sort of was my own symbology. A meaning meant something to me. I don't. I didn't tell them that. I don't think that they realized that. But do you that's remember okay. what you wrote them in the letter? Um, it was something very simple, short and sweet. I don't remember exactly. Um, but I did leave my phone number, and I told them that if they ever need anything, please call me. And um, I told them that they're in my prayers now and always. Ma'am, that letter that you wrote, as we said, was 18 pages long, correct? Uh, that sounds about right. And in that letter, you actually tell the family that the people that did it were this male and this female, right? Yes. So you lied to them, didn't you? Yes. You put it in writing, didn't you? Yes. And when we're, you're talking here, and by here I mean to this person, you indicate things like they deserve to know what happened. They did deserve to know what happened, but did they deserve that lie? I guess not. When you say you guess not, it means that you're not sure. Are you sure that they deserved it, or are you sure they did not deserve it? I wasn't sure because the alternative was worse. You, you trailed off at the end again. What did you say? I felt the alternative was worse. 
You felt the alternative to what was worse, to not sending them a letter? You didn't have to send them a letter, did you? That's not what I'm referring to. Right, but you didn't have to send them a letter, right? No, I didn't. You didn't have to send them a letter where you indicated all these or set out your fabrications, did you? No. And that actually was done to make you feel better, wasn't it? No, I was encouraged to write it. You were, oh, so it wasn't your fault that you wrote it, right? Somebody else encouraged you to write it, right? It was my choice, ultimately. Well, but you're saying you were encouraged to do it, right? Yes, I was. And so, again, you're not taking responsibility for doing it. You're saying somebody else told me to do it, right? It was my choice. Right. So then you were wrong about being encouraged to do it? I was encouraged. And just because somebody encourages you, does that excuse the lie? No. Ma'am, when we were here Thursday, one of the things that uh, we talked about, and this is last Thursday, were these incidents involving physical violence that you claim that Mr. Alexander perpetrated on you. Things like hit, him hitting you. Do you remember we talked about those? Yes. We talked about two of them specifically. We talked about one in August of 2007, and then we talked about one that you claim took place on January 22nd of 2008. Do you recall that we talked about that? I didn't, well, not really, because I didn't consider the August 2007 one to be physical violence. Well, but we did talk about that one. That's the one, so that we're clear, where you came over to his house uninvited, right? No, I was well, not uninvited. Do you remember that you told us that the day before you came over to his house uninvited? No, I called him first. Okay, so you called him. You went over to his house, right? Yes. And you went to the back part of the house, right? To the side, yes. Right, and you looked in through the sliding glass door, right? No, I went around to the back after the side and then looked in through the window, not the sliding glass door. All right, so you looked inside the house, right? Yes. And by the light of the television, you were able to see that he was making out, right? Yes. And this is the one that you told us it was Mr. Alexander and an unknown female, right? Yes. That was buttoning up her bra, right? Rehooking it. What is that? Rehooking it. Uh, Rehooking the bra. And the next day, which would have still been August of 2007, you went to talk to him about it, right? Yes. Because you felt that he owed it to you even though you weren't dating, right? I don't know that I thought that far ahead. I just wanted to Well, know. you did go over there, didn't you? Yes. And you went over there even though you weren't dating, right? We weren't exclusively dating, right? Well, do you remember that we talked about this th last Thursday and you said, no, we weren't dating, but he was courting me. Do you remember saying that? Yes. Okay, so you do remember that you weren't dating, right? Well, it's about terminology. We went on dates, but we weren't boyfriend girlfriend. Okay, you weren't in a situation where you were boyfriend and girlfriend, right? That's right. You had just broken up in June of 2007, right? Yes. And so he's with another woman, and you feel you have the right to go confront him the next day, right? Yes. And this is the situation that you told us that he started chasing you down the hallway, right? Yes. And he grabbed your wrist. Yes. So that was one incident that we talked about last Thursday. Do you remember? Then we talked about another incident. Do you remember that? Yes. And that was the one on January 22nd of 2008 where you claim that he kicked you in that little finger and broke it, right? That's right. Well, ma'am, there was also another um, uh, time that you claimed there was physical violence, and that was in early March of 2008, right? Yes. And this is the time that you told him that you were going to be moving to California, right? Yes, when we argued about it. Ma'am, I'm asking you whether or not that was the time that you told him that you were going to California. Yes or no? That's correct. You, it was a day when the both of you were going over to some sort of tax seminar, something like that, right? Do you remember yes. telling me that? Yes. And according to you, you were in the car, and he reached over after you told him that, and he hit you on the side of the face, right? Not immediately after I told him that, and it wasn't the face. We argued first. Okay, the side of the head, right? Kind of, more the neck area. John. Okay, the neck area. He hit you, right? Yes. And this was in the car, right? Yes. While you guys were 
arguing or talking about it, right? Yes. That's a lie, isn't it? No. Our world. No, isn't it? Isn't. isn't it? No. Well, do you remember that you kept a journal for that day, ma'am? Yes, I do. And do you remember, I'm going to have it marked, as to that answer? Yes. show you the full entry, which is Exhibit 471. If you need to compare it to the original, let me know and I will give it to you. Would you like to compare it to the original? No, thank you. That is a true and accurate copy of the entry of March 2nd, 2008 in your journal, correct? Yes. It was a Sunday, right? Yes. I move for the admission of the exhibit 471. We'd like to see the original and see what was removed from this exhibit. Yes.
You may. particular submission, correct? Yes. And that is your signature at the end of that submission, right? Just my initials. And that signifies that's the end of that particular entry, correct? Yes. There is another entry that deals with March 2nd of 2008, right? Yes. And it's something that you do sometimes in your journal. You enter more than one entry uh, per day sometimes, right? Yes. Okay, I may have that back. I move for the admission of exhibit number 471. 471 is admitted. Judge, I think we have to turn the monitor on. And ma'am, this is an entry for Sunday, March 2nd of 2008, correct? Correct. And if it, the day before it would have been March 1st of 2008, correct? That's right. And that would have been a Saturday, right? Yes. And the day before would have been the last of the Friday, would have been the last day of February, right? Yes. And do you remember whether or not that was leap year? No, I don't remember. It could have been February 29th, though, right? Could if it have. was leap year. Yes. So it starts out that you're writing on Sunday, and you say, well, I didn't get back to writing last night, which would have been Saturday night, right? Yes. And so then you sort of recap what's going on. You say, let's see Friday, which is the last day of February, right? Right. I went over to T-Dogs. T-Dog is... Uh, a name for Travis Alexander, right? Yes, his nickname. For a while to clean, right? And then it says shortly thereafter, he went out to get, go rock climbing with Mimi Hall. Their third date, or second and a half date, really no third, right? Yes. He said it went really well. And then you say, I accidentally fell asleep 
So I was there when he returned, right? Yes. So you were asleep in his house when he came back from a date, correct? That's right. And so if he is out on a date and you know about it, why is it that you feel that back in August of 2007, you can confront him about it if it's the same situation? It wasn't the same situation at this time. Oh, at this time, you, you really knew that it was over then, right? I knew we weren't getting married. Which is different than knowing that it's getting over, right? What do you mean? Well, you said you knew you weren't getting married. I'm asking you whether or not the relationship was over, not whether or not you were going to get married. It wasn't over on March 2nd. It wasn't over at all. In fact, even after that, you continued to have uh, intercourse with him, right? Yes. Where did you fall asleep? I think it was on the love sack upstairs. It was where? On the love sack upstairs. And the love sack is right outside his room, right? Yeah, outside all four bedrooms. And then you talk about what you were supposed to do, but anyway, you say, anyway, and that happened on Friday that you fell asleep, right? If that's the day I'm referencing, yes. Then you talk about the next morning, which is Saturday, March 1st, right? Right. You said that he picked you up so that you could go to the tax seminar. And that's the day that you previously told us involved this physical violence, right? That's right. You said, but we ended up not going. He bought me some. He says something fast. Would you agree that that's breakfast? Yes. And Felix would be Filibertos, correct? Yes. And you were grateful for it. And then you say, anyway, on the way back home, I told him my plans to move back to Wairika and that I probably wouldn't be plugging into the PPL events anymore, right? Yes. That's what you said precipitated the argument and the fighting, right? That's right. Well, then you say, this will keep us both, this will help us both move on and close the gap. What gap are you talking about? It's a figure of speech. Oh, so what gap are you talking about? There's an, it's not about a gap, it's a figure of speech. Meaning what? Meaning close the relationship between us as far as physical and that kind of thing. So this is closing, this is saying that you are now going to be separate and apart and no more sex, right? That was my goal. Is that yes? Is that what that means, yes or no? That's what that means. You say, one thing that I really miss about Arizona is that there are so many awesome Mormons my age, and I've met tons of incredible people that I've come to love and really cherish their friendship, right? Right. And then it says, well, Travis and I talked some more in his car. That's the place that you told us that he backhanded you, right? That's right. And we were able to say some things, at least I was. When you're talking about I was, you're the person who was able to tell him how you felt, right? Yes. And you did it in the car, right? Yes. And it doesn't say anything there that he backhanded you, does it? No, of course not. Well, why not of course? Well, you were free to write it down, right? Yeah, but I would never do that. Well, I'm not asking if you would have done it, ma'am. Isn't it true that there's nothing there that says about that? No, of course not. You keep saying, of course not. You were free to do it, weren't you? Yeah, but I wouldn't have. But you didn't do it, right? No, of course not. Is this the same like with the interview with the detective, where you could have told him the truth, but you chose not to? No, this is different, but that's it's what It's the I same did. sort of circumstance with the detective, right? You could have told Detective Flores everything, right? That much is true, yes. But you had a reason why you didn't tell the detective that, right? Yes. And so now you're telling me, well, I could have written more here, but you have a different reason, right? A similar reason, but different. You had a different reason, right? Yes. So if it isn't in there, and you're telling me that it happened, then there's an issue as to whether or not it did happen, isn't there? Not to me, it happened to of me. Of course not to you. I'm asking you whether or not there's the appearance, at least, since you didn't write anything about it in there, that it never happened, right? Objection argument, Your Honor. Didn't happen, did it, ma'am? Objection argument. May we approach? You may approach.
Man, you lied about the fact that Mr. Alexander backhanded you while you were in the car, didn't you? I had an objection argumentative judge. Oh, Jimmy answer. No, I didn't lie. So then you write, and we, it was the beginning of a bittersweet closure, right? That's right. And closure meaning you were done, you both were going to move on, right? Yes. He is my best friend in the whole, in the whole, is that wide world? Is that what it says? Whole world. So he is your best friend in the whole world. And you're saying that about an individual who just hit you, right? Yes. That speaks against that, doesn't it? Objection, argumentative. That was the goal, the thing. It is so unimaginable to live without him, but it has to be this way. It will be better for both, I think, right? Right. And you're talking about moving away so that you won't have any contact with him, right? Physical contact, yes. Oh, so you don't mind the telephone, it's the physical contact that's the problem, right? It had been a problem in our relationship. I mean, that's not what so I'm asking you. I'm asking you whether or not the physical problem was the, the physical contact was the problem. It was part of the problem. Right. And it's okay, though, if you're up there in Wairika to have phone sex, though, right? Not technically, it's not okay. When you say technically, what does that mean? I'm talking about you're the one that is telling us it will be better for both of you, this distance. So is phone sex okay or not? It's not okay for our religion. I'm not asking about your religion. I'm asking, well, let me do it this way. You, you keep talking about the Mormon religion, but you can't even tell me about going to family home evening, can you? I had to work on Monday nights. Ma'am, can you tell me about family home evening? Yes. I thought you couldn't yesterday. All right, then let's talk about family home or Thursday. Let's talk about family home meeting. It starts at about 7 o'clock, doesn't it? Depends on the ward. Yes or no. Doesn't it start about 7 o'clock? I guess. The state. And it can go until about 8 o'clock, right? It's a one-hour meeting, right? It depends. It depends on what? The ward, the activity. Okay, how about your ward? When would it go to? Um, I think it was about an hour. I don't remember the start time. So if it started at 7, it would go to 8. If it started at 7.30, it would go to 8.30, right? Typically, yes. And afterwards, there would be activities, right? FHE was the activity. So there were no activities afterwards where the uh, young people got together then, according to you, to the ones that you went to? There might have been. When you say there might have been, weren't you there to know? I thought you said you were very Mormon. I usually worked on Monday night. So you don't know then is what you're telling me. Why don't you just tell me you do or you don't? Just tell me either way. I told you what I know. So you know that you don't really know what happens is what you're telling me, right? Yes, you compound question. Restate your question. You yeah. don't know what happens at family home evenings, right? I only know what's happened at the ones yes that I've Yes or no, I'm not asking you. Yes or no, you don't really know what happened at family home meetings, I'm trying right? to answer your question, but you keep over-talking me. I'm going to object to that comment by the defendant. She should be instructed to answer. Can you answer that? I can't. Ask another the question. Then it talks about what happened in terms of the physical contact between you and Mr. Alexander, doesn't it? Part of the physical contact. Pardon? Part of it. It doesn't say part there, does it? No. It says what happened, doesn't it? It says part of what happened. Does it say, I partly, this is part of what happened? Is that, it doesn't say that there, ma'am, does it? Yes, you ask and answer argumentative. Oh, we're all to me answer. Will you repeat that? It doesn't say, I part, this is part of what happened. It just lays out what happened, doesn't it? It lays out what I wrote. And which is what happened, right? Yes, that did happen. Okay. And it says, I leaned in to give him a hug and a kiss on the cheek, right? That's right. Doesn't talk anything about getting hit on the side of the head with his hand, does it? No, he'd already apologized. Yes or no? Does it say that there? I said no. And then you leaned in and you did it to say goodbye 
and he turned his head so that our lips met, right? Yes. The meeting there was not a hand to the side of your head, it was two lips meeting, right? Yes. And then, according to you, it was a series of three very tender, very slow, very soft kisses, right? That's right. Doesn't talk about anything with the backhand, does it? Of course not. Well, you keep saying, of course not. Please take a look at it. Don't say, of course not, when it doesn't say that there. The objection she asked answered this question. Okay, next question. You love his lips, right? That's what it says. That's what it says. And it doesn't say, I love the backhand. It says, I love his lips, correct? Of course. When you keep saying, of course, man, we keep going back to this thing that you keep indicating that there's something there when there isn't. This is your written, these are your written words, right? That's right. Pardon? That's right. And you were the person who set down your version of the events that occurred in that car, right? Only the parts I wanted to remember. Ma'am, does this say this is only parts of what I wanted to remember? It doesn't say that there, does it? No, I was just answering your question. My question is, does it include what you wrote your version of the events inside the car, yes or no? Part of them, yes. You keep saying part. We keep going back and forth, ma'am. This is what you wrote, correct? That's correct. It doesn't say that it's just a part of a larger entry, does it? No. Then you say that you went inside, you fixed your makeup, and you went to Starbucks, got Travis a Frappuccino. You are now out of the car, right? Yes. And you're going to get Mr. Alexander a Frappuccino, right? That's correct. And then you took it to his house, right? Yes. You drove, right? Yes. He dropped you off at your house, right? Yes. And the purpose of going back was so that you could pick up some items that he had been storing, right? And yes. so that you could load them in your car, right? Yes. But instead of that, you ended up being naughty again, right? That's right. So much for closing that gap, right? Yeah. And this was as part of this same event, if you will, where your lips met and you had three kisses, right? Yes, part of the makeup. Right. And then you talk about that being another advantage to moving away since you guys can't stay away from each other, right? That's right. Seems like you were into the sex as much as he was, right? Yes. Says that you helped him clean up a little bit more for his UFC party, right? That's right. That UFC party would have been that Saturday night, right? Yes. And you say that you've never really been into that kind of uh, activity, but you appreciate it, right? That's right. And then we have an issue or an individual by the name of Lonnie that's mentioned in the next paragraph, right? Yes. And Lonnie is the same individual with, that we discussed Thursday involving his baptism and the fact that you missed it because you went to have sex with Mr. Alexander, right? Yes, the same Lonnie. You actually saw the UFC party at Lonnie's house, right? Um, the UFC event, yes. Right. Then, that evening you get home, and Travis called, correct? That's correct. What time did he call? I don't remember. And you spoke, according to that, for an hour and a half, until both of you were sleepy, right? That's right. Well, it does say that, right? That's right. And you made some jokes about Facebook, you talked about how it was if you, if you guys would have children and how their lips would be such that Angelina Jolie would cry, right? Right. And it was just funny, fun talk, right? Yes. No indication that you talked about moving there, right? No. No indication at all that you talked about any physical violence whatsoever, right? That's right. And then you write, I love him, right? That's right. And that, at the very bottom, is your signature, right? Yes. So, this entry does not corroborate 
what you told us happened in the car, right? Right, that's the goal. That's the what? The goal. Did I ask you if it was the goal? No. I asked you whether or not it corroborated it. It doesn't, does it? No. With regard to that supposed injury that you claim that you received, you didn't call the police, did you? No. You didn't tell anybody about it, right? <laughs> no. Um, you, there is no corroboration anywhere, including your journal, that it even happened, right? That's right. All we have is your word, right? That's right. And my injuries. Pardon? Pardon? My injuries. And your injuries? Right. Let me see a photograph of it, ma'am, so that we can put this to bed. What are you talking about? Well, you said that uh, your injuries, did you take a photograph of the injuries when he hit you? No, I was referring to other injuries. I'm talking about that day. Do you have any problem acknowledging that we're talking about this particular day when you're in the car? I don't have a problem with that. Okay. What, are there photographs of them that we don't know about? No. There is no photographic evidence, there's no documentary evidence, and there's no anecdotal evidence, i.e. talking to anybody about it, is there? I would hope not, not to my Well, knowledge. I'm not asking you if what you hope. I'm asking you whether or not there is. There not isn't, to my is my knowledge. It? Pardon? Not to my knowledge. Well, your knowledge is what's important to us. Is there any such items out there that we could look at? Items, no, but as far as telling so other people. the answer no, right? As far as items go, the, I'm talking the about, are, are there any photographs? No photos. Um, aside from this writing, are there any other writings? No. Uh, is there a police report? No. Is there a medical report? No. But we do have some text messages, don't we? Let's take a look at them about what happened that night. They're basically the same thing, right? Right. Except one of them does not include uh, Mr. Alexander's response, right? That's right. So this is the give and take between you and Mr. Alexander the evening of March 1st of 2008, right? Yes. And in fact, you previously acknowledged that the time that's written there, that's actually is part of the message, is seven hours too fast, right? Yes.
72 is admitted. Take a look at the conversation that you had with Mr. Alexander. On March 1st of 2008 at 9.28 p.m. Do you see that? Yes. And that's you sending him a text, right? That's right. And you say, hi, sweetie, correct? Yes. And this is supposedly after he popped you in the side of the head, right? It was. We'd already made up. Ma'am, this is after you claim that he popped you in the side of the head, right? Yes. And then you say, I hope you're enjoying your party. You're talking about the UFC party that you previously referenced in exhibit number 471, which is your journal entry, right? Yes. At least we know that those correspond and cor are corroborated, right? Yes. And when you say sweetie, that also corresponds to the tone of exhibit number 471, where you talk about his lips and how much you love him, right? That's right. And then you're asking to borrow the BMW for church tomorrow, right? Yes. Why are you asking to borrow his car? I can't remember that particular reason, but we were swapping cars back and forth during that time. Same thing with regard to January 21st of 2008, when you were driving his car, right? I think I was driving my car that day. Pardon? I believe I was driving my car that day. Do you remember that the text messages talked about the family home evening and how uh, you needed to go pick up the car? Do you remember that? Yes. So it's sort of the same issue, right? Mm, sort of. And if you drove his BMW to church, that would mean that he would be without a car, right? No, he would drive mine. Okay, so why is it that you want to drive his BMW to church? Is it just to show off or what? No, my car was better than his, so no, that wasn't why. Well, then what's the reason why you want to drive the BMW? It's possible that while well, you still well, drive... Well, I'm not asking you to... Well, it's possible. I want you to tell me she what. Asked, he asked her why, and she answered. Objection, speculation, Madam Vice President. All right, restate your question. Ma'am, why did you want to borrow his BMW, if you know? The only time I borrowed his BMW for church or Monday nights or evenings was so that I could drive the sister missionaries around because my car didn't fit everyone. So is that what you're saying then, that you wanted to drive the missionaries around? That would have been why. Okay. So I wanted to know. I only need it for that day and I'll bring it, at before, bring it back before the day is over, right? Yes. What time did the services start the next day? I think my ward started at, well, it was always changing. It changed twice that year, so it was either 12 or 1 o'clock p.m. And how long did it go? Three hours. Then his response is at 9.32, which is what? Of course. And then at 9.58, what do you say to him? I say, thanks, baby. You're the best. And he was the best, wasn't he? Best at what? I don't know. You're the one that wrote it. Why don't you tell me? I wrote that because it made him feel good. Oh, so you're lying to him then. He's not the best. You just want to make him feel good. I wasn't lying to him. Well, didn't you just tell me that you wrote that because you wanted him to feel good, right? That's right. The implication with that is that he wasn't the best, that you did not believe that he was the best. The best at what? I don't know. You wrote it, right? Yes. So why don't you tell me what you meant? I wanted him to feel good. Okay. I know you wanted him to feel good. So the only thing that we can take from that, given what you've answered, is that you were lying to him. He was not the best. The state. And if you do tell him that he's the best, isn't this the same individual that you claim has just hit you in the side of the head, right? <coughs> More the neck, but that's right. Okay. He's the same individual that hit you on the side of the neck, right? Yes. And now you're telling him that he's the best, right? Yes. Do you see how that's inconsistent? The or no? It's argumentative. Overruled. It wasn't inconsistent with our pattern. I'm not asking you if it was inconsistent with your pattern. I'm asking whether or not, whether or not you can see 
that you're telling him he, he's the best after you claim he's hit you on the side of the neck. Objection, ask ma'am. Just answer the same question. Overruled, you may answer. It wasn't inconsistent with the apology that followed. I'm not asking about the apology that followed after this or that may have followed. I'm asking, isn't it true that it doesn't make sense that you're telling him the best after he hit you at the side of the neck? It doesn't make sense, does it? Objection, Your Honor. Just ask and answer. Overruled, you may answer. It makes sense because he apologized. So is there an apology that came afterwards? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And are you saying that it's part of these text messages that the apology came afterwards? No, but it was part of the three tender kisses. It's what? Part of the three tender kisses that I wrote about. Oh, I see. Kisses. So when you write that there were three tender kisses, which is exhibit number 471, you're telling us that, yeah, well, that's right there, but I just didn't include the fact that he hit me on the side of the neck, right? Of course not. Of course not. What? You did not include it in there, did you? No. Ma'am, would the same thing with regard to, now we're just talking about the injuries that you claim that you've received. With regard to the injury to the finger, you claim that that happened on January 22nd of 2008, right? That's right. There's no, the photograph shows that you don't have an injury to the finger as of May 15th of 2008, doesn't it? That's not what the photograph shows. So you're claiming that that photograph shows, and let me just show it to you so that we know what we're talking about. Exhibit 453, you're claiming that that shows the injury to your finger, right? They're bent, yes. It's so you're saying see. that, yes, it does show the injury to your left ring finger like you showed us here in court, right? Yeah, yes or no, ma'am? I just, you, you put up the finger in court, remember you did that? And you're saying that this is the same finger with the same injury, right? That is the same. Do you remember, again, talking about whether or not there's anything that's corroborated? You didn't call the police on this, right? The that's finger right. issue? Right? Of course. Of course, yes or of course not? Of course not. So you didn't. That's a no, right? No, I did not. And you didn't go to the hospital to get any medical care, so there's no paperwork to show us on it, right? That's right. But there is some other evidence that points to the fact that it happened after January 21 of 2008, right? Objection, argumentative. Oh, I don't think so. Well, you had a conversation with Detective Flores. Do you remember that? Yes. And do you remember that he looked at your hand? Yes. And remember what you told him? Yes. And you told him that it happened during the time that these two people came in, right? Yes. And that then you showed him your finger that was bent, right? Yes. It was bent just like you showed us here in court, right? Yes. So your prior statements indicate that this injury to your finger didn't happen on January 21 of 2008. It happened on June 4th of 2008, right? Yes. And in terms of the injury that you claimed or the physical violence that occurred in August of 2007, you claim that all he did was grab your hand, right? After he chased you, right? Yeah, he caught my wrist. He grabbed you in the wrist, right? Yes. And other than minor pain, there's nothing else associated with it, right? It wasn't painful at all. And in fact, uh, but you were scared of that, right? Yes. And in fact, that's one of the things that you related. To June 4th, when you killed him, you sort of flashed back to that, right? It was a split-second decision. Is that yes or no? I can't say I had a flashback. Well, can you say that when you testified here in court that you referenced that specific incident as a triggering point involving the murder? That's correct. And so that means that you thought about it, right? I must have. Pardon? Yeah, it went through my mind, but it wasn't a flashback. OK, so you have a problem with the word flashback, right? Yes. So it went through your mind, right? Yes. You thought about it, right? 
Yes. And however, the incident in August of 2007, you said didn't hurt, right? That's right. And he stopped once he grabbed your wrist, right? Stopped what? Whatever he was doing. Can you be more specific? No, can you be more specific? What happened after he grabbed your wrist? After he grabbed my wrist, he pulled me close to him <clears throat> and he apologized and he took me in his arms and squeezed me. Okay, so this event where you're going down the hallway, he grabs you by the wrist, he then apologizes to you, right? Yes. And you're saying that just because there's this event where he goes down the hall and he grabs you and he apologizes you, is the event that you're thinking about at the time that he's coming after you on June 4th of 2008, as you claim? It's the event I thought about when I decided to go right instead of left. But isn't this the event where he is screaming according to you very loudly, right? Which event? The first, the June 4th, 2008 event, right? I'm sorry, say that again. In, on June 4th of 2008, you claim he was very angry with you, right? Very. And he was nude, right? Yes. He was coming after you, right? Yes. And he's going after you down the hallway, right, as you're running, right? Yes. And this event, on June 4th of 2008, you say, as he's doing that, you remember the event of August of 2007, right? Yes. And in August of 2007, the consequence of that was that he hugged you and he apologized, right? After he grabbed my wrist, yes. Okay, ma'am, fine. He grabs your wrist, he hugs you, and he apologizes, right? Grabs my wrist and pulls me toward Okay, him. grabs your wrist, pulls you, apologizes, right? Yes. You didn't have any fear when he was apologizing, did you? Yes, I was stiff with fear. When he was apologizing? Yes. But nothing happened after that, right? You mean nothing dangerous? I mean, did he hit you after that? No. Did he throw you on the floor? No. Um, did he injure you in any way, shape, or form? No. He was just angry according to you and he was apologizing at the same time, apparently. Um, I don't know about if his contemporaries, he was angry and then he apologized. Okay, so he's angry. And he's angry when he grabs your wrist, right? I don't know. Well, you were there. You just told us he was angry, right? Yes. So he was angry. Was he or wasn't he angry when he grabbed your wrist? I don't know what his state of mind was when he chose to grab my wrist. Okay. When you say that he was angry, when do you tell us or when do you form the opinion that he's angry involving the incident in August of 2007? When do you form that opinion that he's angry? One, when he let out a scream and palmed the wall down in the laundry room. And then, too, when he ran upstairs and started banging his head on the linen closet and repeating something over and over about himself. Okay, with regard to that, he actually, in that incident in August of 2007, it started downstairs, right? Yes. And that's something that you're thinking about back on June 4th of 2008, about an incident that happened downstairs, right? No. Well, it's part of the same incident, isn't it? Yes. Where he ran away from you, right? No. Well, wait a minute. You said he started down, it started downstairs on the washer, right? Yes. And then he went upstairs. He ran upstairs. It's your turn, right? Yes. You stayed downstairs, right? Yes, for a few he, moments. Yes, you did stay downstairs, didn't you? Yes. You let him go to do whatever he was going to do upstairs, right? Yes. You didn't know what he was going to do, right? No. You weren't afraid at that point, were you? A little bit. Well, if you're afraid, then why go after him? I want to know what that sound was. Well, it, again, just because you hear a sound and you're afraid, you still think that you, you're going, you, you want to go investigate? Yeah, he'd never hit me at that point. Well, I'm not asking you if he had hit you at that point, have, have, did I? No. I'm asking you your state of mind, which is what we want to know, right? This is what you've been talking about, right? Yes. And you're downstairs, it's your state of mind is that he's angry, right? <coughs> My state of mind was that I was concerned. My conclusion was that he was angry. Okay. 
your state of mind is now different than your conclusion, right? Somewhat, yeah. Okay, so your conclusion that he was angry was formed downstairs, right? Yes. And this conclusion that he was angry was with you when you went upstairs, right? Yes. This conclusion that he was angry did not instill any fear in you, did it? When he palmed the wall, it scared me. Pardon? When he hit the door frame, I mean, with his palm, it scared me. Was this downstairs? Yes, in the laundry room. All right, and when you were downstairs and he strikes his palm against the something inanimate, you get scared, right? Yeah, the impact. So now your state of mind is that you are scared and that he's angry, right? Yes, I'm concerned for him also. You're also concerned, right? You didn't pick up the phone to call 911, did you? No. So there's no corroboration of that incident from that, right? No. There, what, did he, what damage did he cause to the door? Which door? The one that he hit. That's the only door that we're talking about, right? Do you know of a different door that he hit? Yes. Didn't you just tell me that he hit one door? I said he palmed the door frame. Okay, so he hit the door frame. Was there any damage to the door frame downstairs when you guys were having this fight back in August of 2007 when you had the state of mind that you were afraid? What? Tell me. Was there a photograph of it? No. So we don't have any corroboration of that, right? That's right. You didn't tell anybody about this incident, did you? No. So nobody knows about it, right? I don't think so. Well, how would they know about it if you didn't tell them? I don't know who he told. So you think he was walking around telling people these things? Did you ever hear anybody say that he was saying these things? I think I did. Okay, who? Give me a name. They were in his text messages. Who's that? They were in his text messages. In his text messages to you, he said, I hit the door? No. In his text messages to who, then? Oh, I, I didn't say hit the door. I meant referencing that event. I'm talking about hitting the door. Are we having problems communicating here? I'm talking about hitting yes. the door. He did tell that to somebody? No, yes, we're having problems communicating. Did he tell somebody about it? Yes or no? About hitting the door. The door, frame. yes. That's what we're talking about. Because he didn't hit the door downstairs. He hit the door frame. The door was open. And I uh, don't know if he told anyone or not. Hitting the door frame. Do you have a name of somebody that Mr. Alexander told that he hit the door frame? No. So there's no corroboration there, right? That's right. And you never told anybody that you were scared or anything like that, right? No. So we don't have any corroboration there, though, right? That's right. But you were not scared enough to stay downstairs, right? That's right. You decided to go upstairs, right? Yes. And you go upstairs, and he's... You're hearing a thump, thump, thump noise, right? Yes. And the curiosity gets the better of you, right? Concern. Okay, the concern gets the better of you, even though you are what? Are you mildly scared or no? I'm alarmed and stunned. Okay, you're alarmed and stunned. As you go upstairs, you're alarmed and you're stunned. Why are you alarmed and stunned if you don't know what's going on upstairs? Because the only other thing you'd ever hit before was my car. Okay, so you're alarmed and you're stunned and you're in this house where you're hearing this thump, 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 right? That's right. It never occurred to you to call 911, did it? No. And there's, so then you go upstairs and he's not any danger to you up there, is he? Objection about the stimulation. Did you perceive any danger to you? Not immediately. I'm asking when you got there, did you perceive any danger to you? After I got there, yes. When you got there is my question, ma'am. Did you perceive any danger to you? Objection, yes, ma'am. Sustained. So Not you, immediately. Oh, so I'm you sorry. get there, right? And he's thumping his head against what? The linen closet door. And this is the door that is next to the sink. This is the closet that's next to the sink, right? That's right. And if we're using the directional, that's north of the sink, right? Yes. And it's down the hallway where he ended up, finally, with his, uh, head, with his uh, 
throat slashed, right? That's the same hallway we're talking about, right? I don't know. It's the same hallway, but I don't know about the other part of your question. So you don't know about where, you've seen the photographs, haven't you? Um, yes, part of them. You were here in court when we showed them, right? Yes. Do you have any doubt, or do you have reason to doubt that those photographs are not true and accurate depictions of uh, Mr. Alexander? Doors opened or closed on that closet? The linen closet? The one that we're talking about. The only one we're talking about, ma'am. Yes. The door was closed. And so he's banging his head up against those doors, right? That's right. And those are the kind of doors that are not super um, tight so that there's this uh, very small clearance to them, right? They're the kind of doors that are somewhat flimsy, aren't they? These doors, ma'am, are they real? You've opened that those doors before, right? Yes. And they don't have a lock to them, right? I don't think so. And you could just, you think that a closet door, it opens, you think that this particular closet door may have a lock? I don't remember it having a lock. Okay. And so, is it the kind that is accordion or is it the kind that has one handle on it? What do you mean by accordion? Well, when it opens up on both sides. Oh, it's just a door with a handle. It's just a door, right. Yes. And the door was closed, right? Yes. And he's banging his head up against the door, right? Yes. He's not doing anything to you. He's not talking to you. He's actually went away from the confrontation, right? Yes. You're the one that's chasing him down, aren't you? I didn't chase him. Okay. You're the one that's going after him, right? Okay. Well, no, not okay. You're the one that's going up there to... He's not, he's, he's already left, hasn't he? No, he's still in the house. No, he hasn't left and gone upstairs? Are you having problems? You just told us that he went upstairs. Uh, Jackson, I can Saying, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take the afternoon recess at this time. Please be back in the designated area at 325. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Please be seated. You may step down. Council approach, please. 